Good day everyone. Today we are going to continue our lesson number three. This is about strengthening local network. So we'll discuss the strategic analysis and intuitive thinking. These are the two skills that go hand in hand in managing a network. These skills are complementary. Intuitive thinking is a crucial when developing fresh ideas while strategic analysis provides necessary data and framework to foster the actual or the actualization of the data. So, a strategic analysis is a process that involves researching an organization's business environment within which it operates. For instance, a strategic analysis of a firm's external environment and internal environment gives its manager a clear picture of what they have to work with and also what needs to be addressed when developing a plan for um, the future. So, analysis comes early in the strategic process because the information a manager gets from the analysis informs the decision-making and smooth working of that organization. With the help of strategic planning, the objective or goals that are set by the organization can be fulfilled. These are the key components in strategic um, thinking. The first one we have the SWOT analysis. Okay, so another one we have the PEST analysis. And we have the Porter's Five Forces, the Four Corners analysis. So these are the key or the four key components in strategic thinking. Let us first focus on SWOT, uh, SWOT analysis. So what is a SWOT analysis? This is one of the most reputed techniques for internal strategic analysis. There is no better way to benefit from a strategically performed analysis than to use it to detect the strength the opportunities, the weaknesses, and the threats that your project may suffer. So performing a SWOT analysis will help you create a strong and long-term vision through strategic planning for your organization. The important thing is to constantly evaluate the environment in which the company operates and act accordingly. So it is essential for an organization to take into account the SWOT principle in order uh, to be able to prevent a number of problems that can arise if there is no systematic analysis. So let us further break down these attributes and understand how an organization can conduct a complete strategic analysis to be able to plan and perform better with each passing year. So, the strength of the company are the positive aspects of, of it that you can control in order to obtain better results. They are your strengths, which makes you stand out, or which make you stand out from others. So knowing this type of information is very important because these are the elements that give you an advantage over your competition. We also have this business weaknesses. There are certain characteristics of an organizations that need to be improved in order to be able to perform better and complete in the market. These are called business weaknesses wherein an organization needs to identify them well in advance and approach the problem with a corrective measure. So we also have these threats to an organization. These factors need to be detected and a risk management strategy needs to put in place so that Threats like stronger brand value of the competitors or better relationship of competitors with retailers, etc. don't have an adverse effect on the company's growth 
Example are the multiple players in the market with the same products. The downturn in economy or better advertising of the same product by competitors. These are some threats that have to be dealt with carefully so that the competitors don't take advantage of the situation. Okay, so we have these opportunities for the company. So as part of an organization, one must detect the opportunities they have to grow because knowing the path an organization must follow is a great step toward success. They must take advantage of all those external factors that are positive for an organization. Another component of strategic analysis is the best analysis. It is a scan of external macro environment in which an organization exists. So it is a useful tool for understanding the political, economic, social, and technological environment that an organization operates in. So it can be used for evaluating the market growth or decline, and as such, the position, potential, and direction of the business. So political factors includes government regulations such as employment laws, environmental regulations, uh, tax policies, so other political factors are trade restrictions and political stability. So economic factors are the factors that affect the cost of capital and purchasing power of an organization. Economic factors include economic growth, interest rates, inflation, and currency exchange rates. We also have the social factors. These factors impact the consumer's needs and political market size for an organization's goods and services. So social factors include population growth, the age, demographics, and attitudes towards health. And in the technological factors, this influence the barriers um, to entry. It makes or buy decisions and investments in innovation, such as automation, investment, incentives, and the rate of technological change. So next, we have Porter's Five Forces Analysis. Porter's Five Forces is a model that identifies and analyzes five competitive forces that shape every industry and helps determine an industry's weaknesses and strengths. So it was named after the Harvard Business School professor Michael E. Porter. Strategic analysis usually uh, employs the five forces or the Porter's five forces to give an insight if a new product or service is feasible or not. Porter's model can be applied to any segment of economy to understand the level of competition within the industry and enhance a company's long-term profitability. So supplier power is an evaluation on how convenient it is for the supplier to raise the price of their goods or services. It is therefore a driven or driven by the number of suppliers in every aspect. Buyer power um, gauges on how comfortable it may be for the buyers to dive prices down which is subject to the number of potential buyers, the significance of every buyer, and the value of the products or commodities being transferred from one supplier to another. In competitive rivalry, it is when the thrill comes in, as the number of competitors play in the market that will offer different products which may diminish the attractiveness of some products in the market. Well, the threat of substitution is made when buyers purchase substitute products due to the spiral height of a price increase. When it happens, it decreases the power of the suppliers and the attractiveness of the product in the markets. Now, the threats of a new entry will take place due to the existence of a new entrepreneurs unless the older business 
have a strong market portfolio that will block the buyers from purchasing the new entrants. So another one we have the four corner analysis. So in this um, component, it focuses on motivation, management, action, and capabilities on the competitor's strategic portfolio. It was developed also by Michael Porter. This model is well designed to help the company strategist assess a competitor's intent, objectives, and strengths. They are to create a profile of the competitor's strategy, distinguish the competitor's possible response to a variety of strategic plans other competitors may undertake, and also know the competitor's possible reaction to the variety of industry transfers and changes in the community. While strategic analysis is important in flourishing a network, it can be more powerful when partnered with intuitive thinking. So the word intuition comes from the Latin verb intuiri, translated as considered from the late Middle English word intuit, which means to contemplate. So it is basically the kind of thinking that helps you understand reality in the moment without logic or analysis. So there is no other language involved in it either. It's entirely about signs and sensations. So most of the time, it goes against whatever you might think of as rational. Now, here are the components of intuitive thinking. We have this immediacy. So in layman's terms, this can also be described as a gut feeling. We also have this sensing relationships. These sensing relationships are sudden flow of thoughts that our senses dictate to us activates our thinking. Lastly, we are able to intuit because we have the capacity to reason or think. So alongside rationality, intuitive thinking is also a unique human ability. The ability to reason helps us realize valuable concepts and ideas. So that's all for lesson number three. I hope you have learned something. Thank you very much for watching.